Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkelzonki, and welcome to another game of Age of Empires. And I know I said that I would not upload another game unless it was really good. Um, I didn't actually say that in the video that I made of my first Age of Empires, but I did say that in the comments. Some people were saying, oh, this wasn't a very good game. Uh, I had a couple comments that say, I love this game growing up, and it was a blast to play, um, but this particular game wasn't very interesting, and it's true. The game that I uploaded, you know, it wasn't very close. Um, me and my friend that played in that game kind of won easily, and I felt bad about that. So I promised I would not upload another game unless it was a very, very good, close, competitive game. So, I guess we have to introduce the players here. Um, I am... Monkozonki, obviously, in the blue, and I'm playing as the Teutons, or the Teutons. Some people like to pronounce them that, even though I'm pretty sure it's the Teutons. But um, they they are a civilization that's really good with, uh, I believe, infantry is their bonus, but they're also pretty good with um, making cavalry as well, as in knights. Um, so they're pretty good, decent for knights. I decided to make a few knights later on in the game. You'll see the strategy I went for. I actually went for a crazy, weird strategy that was super risky and didn't quite pay off as well as I hoped. But um, yeah, you'll see the outcome later in the video. I'm obviously not going to say who won or uh, what strategy I used until that happens. So um, earlier on in the game where we're just getting our economies started... Um, I'll, I guess I'll talk a little bit about uh, what's going to happen. So I'm playing Bregma, who is kind of the guy I play with most of the time when I play uh, Age of Empires. I usually play with Bregma. And I guess we'll um, we'll look at him because in the beginning, if you ever want some tips on like how to get your economy started, I'm not the best at that because I kind of suck at uh, starting out in the game. So we'll, I guess, spectate him for a little bit. And uh, I do have the score lead at this point, but that won't last for very long. Um, but anyway, he's just, yeah, we're playing on the map Yucatan, which is kind of like a Inca-ish ancient America's map. It's hard to explain. But, um, yeah, you get turkeys on this map, which are exactly like sheep on every other map. They're just a different creature for some reason. But anyway, um, yeah, he's scouting with one of his sheep and also his scout cavalry, which is actually a really, really good way to scout. Um, but anyway, I guess he's just uh, creating villagers and building up, and so am I as well. So I had met, actually played Brigma several times, uh, one versus one in the past, and he kind of destroyed me every single time because he's a better player than I am. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be trying my best, obviously. So, um, yeah, I'm just putting up my first lumber camp here. And the nice thing about this map, Yucatan, I don't know why I got distracted, but I really wanted to talk about the map a little bit, is the map is very, very good um, for food. There's a lot more food on this map than on pretty much any other map. Um, so you're going to find more turkeys than on a traditional map. Um, there's more boars than on a traditional map, so that helps a lot. And there's also more berries than on a traditional map. So all in all, it just really helps um, you get started faster. And um, that is really nice for like new players who struggle to get food sometimes. Um, it's just so you don't have to build farms while you're still in the Dark Age. You can always hunt from these boar, or there's a ton of deer here. You can hunt from the deer as well. And this is where I was really stupid. I lost my scout to his town center because I was not paying attention. And he kind of um, killed my scout because I ran my scout right into his town center. And uh, in return, he actually gave, let me kill uh, his scout with my town center because he's a, he's a nice guy and I was also kind of typing to him uh, while I lost my scout so anyway Bregma here is luring his first boar luring boar is something really really important because boar is the fastest uh, source of food in the game you gather from it really really fast with villagers and he has some idols here which is kind of a, a new move but um so you want to lure your boar pretty much once you start running out of sheep or turkeys in this case so yeah he's gathering from his boar right now and I believe I start doing the same pretty soon yeah I build a mill over here because I wanted to gather from these deer and I have a ton of idol villagers because I'm again I'm said if you want any tips on how to start out in this game I am not the right person to watch but anyway, um, yeah, I start gather from, gathering from these boar and these deer as well. Uh, one kind of frustrating thing, though, is I can't actually speed the game up any more than this. Um, this is normal speed, and this is sped up. And sped up is really not much faster than normal speed. So if you really want to, um, feel free to skip ahead, like, 
five minutes in the video or so until um, some action starts happening because I can tell you that both me and Bregma um, went for an attack in the feudal age. So neither of us stayed passive. Um, we actually went for attacks pretty soon. So anyway, um, I believe there actually is a mod that you can install that um, gives you the ability to speed up the game even faster than it already is. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I might look into that. If there is a mod, if anyone knows about it, that lets you speed up a little faster, I would definitely be in for that. But anyway, um, I believe we start going up to the Feudal Age pretty soon. Um, Bregma's moved over to his berries, and he's starting to wall off his base, too. Uh, he, I believe, created a little wall here. Hopefully that's not spoiling too much, but I believe he created like walls around his base as well, which does make it a little bit harder to pressure him. But anyway, sp super speed here just for a little bit, just until um, we start advancing to the Feudal Age. So he's probably about to go up. I know I for sure am. Um, I actually am on very... Yeah, I just clicked up to the Feudal Age. That's why I was on such low food. Um, I went up on 27 population. Usually I try to go up on about uh, 27 to 29 population. That's a really good um, time to go up to the Feudal Age. It makes sure you have enough villagers so that you have a, a ton of resources by the time you reach the Feudal Age. And if you're good, you can actually advance to the Castle Age like a couple minutes after you advance to the Feudal Age. Um, it's kind of hard to do, and it takes a little bit of practice, but it is possible. So anyway, uh, I finished off on my board there, and um, I'm going to start transitioning into deer. And this is a part that I believe makes me want to cry, because my villagers are idle here for a long time, and I just completely failed here. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a little bit. But I'm also sending over a sneak villager, and you guys will see what that's about. So if you're still here in the video, which I really hope you are, because this is where the fun part starts. So unfortunately... Um, this villager dies to this jaguar because I kind of did not realize the jaguar was attacking her. And for some reason, uh, villagers are supposed to turn around and attack a jaguar when it attacks her. But for some reason in this game, they weren't. This villager walked like all this way with the jaguar just mauling her back. And she didn't turn around. Look, my villagers are still idle. This is so bad. This just makes me want to cry because this really, really hurt me later in the game because... Um, you know, those villagers not gathering food means I have that much wasted food. They're just standing there for a good 30 seconds, which really hurts. Um, but I was looking at my villager here that was dying. So anyway, I'm sending over another villager, a sneak villager. And this kind of transitions over my, my crazy, crazy attack. You'll see exactly what happens with my crazy attack later in the game. Because I do something completely nuts that I personally have watched, like, probably hundreds of uh, Age of Empire games on YouTube, and I have never ever seen anyone try what I try in this video. So you'll see exactly what that is later. Again, not going to ruin it, but I, there is a reason I'm uploading this video, and it's because something pretty cool happens. So my sneak villager is going over, and my plan was there's only one thing that you do with the sneak villager obviously you you build an archery range or a stable close to your enemy's base and then you attack them with archers or scout cavalry um, I decided to go archers because the Teutons um, cannot upgrade their scout cavalry like every other civilization can the Teutons cannot upgrade scouts so there's no reason to make them because they're just kind of crap so um, I put down a barracks here because you have to build a barracks first before you can build an archery range. That's just kind of the way it is. I know it sucks. It's horrible. But um, you just got to deal with it. And my economy is looking pretty good. Let's look over at Bregman and see what he's doing. So he's already in the feudal age. Um, and I just advanced to the feudal age a little bit ago as well. Um, so at the moment, I believe he's just kind of booming up. He does go for a little bit of pressure. I did already tell you guys that he would go for a little bit of pressure. Not too much. He didn't go too crazy. Um, but he did attack my economy, and he was actually fairly successful with it, which I'm ashamed to admit. Um, but yeah, he's just trying to wall up here, and luckily I actually got that sneak villager through. Like, my sneak villager is right here, and he put that wall up here, and my sneak villager could not have gotten through. But since I sent him through, like, a minute or two ago, I got through this area before he put the wall up, so... I was pretty thankful. I did not know this at the time because I couldn't see, if you look at my point of view, um, I can't see this wall going up. But um, at the time, actually there's like this little patch of faded grass. That means that there's a building there. That's a tip. Um, if there's a patch of faded grass like that, it means that a building is there. 
or a destroyed building was there. One of the two. But, um, yeah, if I was paying attention, I could have realized that he was walling this off now. But, yeah, I do have my archery range up. And this is what I was talking about, his pressure. He starts off with one archer. Um, so even just this one archer does, like, way more damage than it should. Because I'm just trying to get this house up here, and this archer decides to attack my villager. I don't believe he kills anyone with this archer, but he does really disrupt my economy. So um, he, I believe he's creating some more archers at the moment. No, not at the moment, but he will soon uh, because he comes with a he comes in with a couple more archers later. So at the moment, Bregma is just going for a really really traditional approach. He still doesn't know about my sneak villager. Again, there's that patch of faded grass there. That means that a building is there. Um, I know it's really hard to actually um, train yourself to look around the map at all the areas you explored in the back of your base and look for any of those patches of faded grass. But if you do. It can really save you. So if he had, he would know that there was a sneak villager there. He could have put some archers back there, took out that villager, and this game would have gone very differently. But anyway, um, he's back here in my base, uh, kind of harassing these villagers. And I actually gathered from all the deer, as you can see, from all the tar carcasses on the ground here. All those deer that were there earlier, yeah, they're all dead now. I harvested all those deer. So yeah, just this one archer is really disrupting my economy. Um, he's forcing my villagers, um, and I did something really stupid here. I actually decided to attack this archer with my villagers, which isn't always a terrible thing, but I sent like 15, 10, 15 villagers to attack this archer, and what that does is that, um, that has 10, 15 villagers not gathering for several seconds, which can really hurt your economy. Later on in the game, having your economy at a perfect state isn't such a big deal, but, um, the earlier on in the game that you are, the really more perfect your economy has to be, otherwise you just really screw yourself over later because the uh, mistakes compound. But anyway, yeah, that archer will die in a little bit. I think I finally send my villagers back. This is so much wasted gather time, as you can see. Those villagers are just following that archer around and really wasting a ton of time. So, um, Brigma is coming in with four more archers. He's looking to do a little bit more harassment, and so am I. I'm coming in with my archers as well. As you can see, we can just turn it off Fog of War now. It's not that big of a deal, so we can just see the whole map, and I don't have to keep switching. So I come in with my archers here. I'm looking to get in some harassment. I'm just trying to pick off some of these villagers, but they're too close to the town center, so I can't. And um, Bregma is still wandering around with these villagers. I believe he's going to attack uh, my gold mine or my woodcutting. And I'm trying to sneak around his town center and look if he has any resources in the back. Obviously he does, but I couldn't see that during the game. I had no idea what was back there. But Bregma is going to be coming out with some skirmishers from these archery ranges. If we can just look at that really fast. I believe, yeah, he's creating some skirmishers from these archery ranges. And those are going to be able to take out my archers uh, really, really quickly. So that's not a good thing. I wasted quite a bit of money. Um, so yeah, he, here he comes in with these archers attacking my wood collectors. So I have to send all of these wood collectors over to the TC, which is just really, really um, bad because it really cuts down on my gather time. So anyway, yeah, he's just killing off a couple of villagers. I think he got two. Oh, I only see one dead body on the floor. So he only got one. Um, but luckily, the good thing about the Teutons is they're... Teutons. Their town centers have a really, really long range and higher attack than any other civilization. So it only takes like one volley of arrows to kill off these archers, which is really nice. And the uh, town center has a longer range. Um, so that really helps as well. But anyway, um, I believe I picked off a couple villagers of Bregma here that were gathering berries. And I'm going to go attack his gold camps, but he has skirmishers coming in. Um, so those archers are not long for this world. He's just going to kill them off very, very easily with those skirmishers. So I just put my archers here, put them on stand ground so they just stand there and just pick off those villagers. So that's going to be really helpful. Um, I got him off of his gold gathering time, but as you can see, his look at all these idle villagers. This just hurts to look at. Just absolutely stopping my economy because I'm paying attention to these archers up here and I'm not even thinking about these villagers down here and I go to kill the archer with villagers I'm a little bit smarter this time I don't send quite so many villagers after just the one archer but anyway I eventually yeah I do kill that archer and then some more idle time so I'm I know I'm really pointing out a lot of mistakes that I did so I did advance to the castle agent I did upgrade the crossbowmen you might be thinking oh this is such a huge waste because Teutons aren't good with crossbowmen. They're good with infantry and uh, debatably knights as well. 
So why am I upgrading to crosswomen when I should just be creating knights? Because if you have played Age of Empires Online, you know that pretty much everyone just spams knights as soon as they advance to the castle age and does nothing else. Um, but yeah, I actually decided to uh, put up some crossmen, and I will be putting out some knights. Um, I start putting up a stable here in just a minute. That's what this villager is uh, going over to do, is build a stable. So, yes... This is kind of a little bit of an unorthodox approach. It's not something you never see. Um, putting kind of a mini base in the back of your opponent's base and harassing them. That's called a forward base, by the way. That's not something you never see in games, but this is not the crazy thing that I ended up doing. Uh, you'll see what that is later. So I do something really, really stupid here. I just send my archers forward and just pretty much sacrifice myself to the skirmishers. Because Bregma is in the castle age now, and he's going to be upgrading to elite skirmisher, so his skirmishers will just cut my archers to pieces. Um... But I will still keep creating them later on. Yeah, he has those elite skirmishers now, which just absolutely destroy archers. Um, so I'm trying to get my economy back in shape now. At the moment, I believe I am. Yeah, just continuing to pump out some villagers, which is a really good thing. Uh, I only have one town center up at the moment, and he has almost three. He has two town centers and another one almost created. So his economy is way ahead of mine at the time. Again, those archers just got destroyed. Um, they did not stand a chance. But yeah, he has three town centers now, all pumping out villagers, and I only have one. I start to put up my second right here. So my economy is really lagging behind, and I can see from the score that you know what, I'm going to be screwed unless I don't do something drastic. I figured, you know, um, at this point in the game, it's probably just going to be another blowout. I'm probably just going to get killed playing this guy again like I did in the last few times we played one versus one. And I was like, oh, I might as well just give up now. But then I had an idea. And you'll see what that idea is. But, yeah, I put up my second town center now. So I'm on two town centers. Bregma is on three town centers. I do not believe he transitions into four town centers. Um, four town centers can be a good idea sometimes. It depends on your style of play. But he, uh, Bregma actually walked right past my forward base. And he did see it. He did notice the forward base. He was just sending his archers to harass me. But while he was walking past, since he's all walled up here, his skirmishers had to go around here. And that's when he saw the forward base. So I am now discovered. And um, luckily, I had a couple knights out. Uh, otherwise, these skirmishers would just easily pick off my villager. And that would be bye-bye forward base. But luckily, I had a few knights, off, uh, knights out. And knights easily, easily kill skirmishers. So that wasn't too much of a big deal. But, of course, he's going to put up a barracks and start pumping out pikemen. Uh, and pikemen are very, very adept at killing knights. He's already creating a few spearmen now, which, um, of course, later upgrade into pikemen. Um, so, yeah, one thing Bregma does is all he ever creates is counter units. He doesn't really create typical units. Like, for example, if you're making archers, all he does is create skirmishers. And if you're creating um, cavalry, all he ever does is create pikemen, which can be a good thing and can be a bad thing because... Um, more expensive units like knights are just way more powerful than counter units so the counter units are great they're very good at um, being defensive um, you can really cut down your opponent's army that way but it's also really hard to destroy someone's base if you just have skirmishers and pikemen because they're terrible at killing villagers and they're terrible at um, destroying buildings knights are much better at that um, crossbowmen for example and cavalry archers are much much better at harassing villagers and destroying economies um, than like pikemen and the skirmishers are but it can be a good way of playing defensively because obviously those pikemen and skirmishers are very very cheap um, compared to say knights so you spend a lot less resources um, but you can also put up a pretty good defense against your opponent's army so if you are a new player and you just kind of want to hold your own versus other people um, a great method is just to really pump out a lot of spearmen and skirmishers because they're super cheap so you can just mass them and they're pretty good at killing the opponent's powerful units as well. So yeah, those uh, those spearmen are going to easily kill that knight here. And um, since he only has spearmen and he hasn't upgraded a pikeman yet, they're still not great. Knights will still kill them, 
But um, as soon as he upgrades those pikemen, which I believe he does pretty soon, uh, pikemen upgrade is not on the way yet, but he will have that out soon. Um, yeah, once he upgrades those, they're going to be much, much more dangerous to knights. So as you can see, those knights just cut down the pikemen pretty easily, but that will change soon. So yeah, I had my knights forward here, which was a terrible idea, and I believe I just wasn't really paying attention. I'm not sure what I was paying attention to at this time, but it wasn't to these knights because they're just going to die. I had one knight attacking the barracks while the spearman was attacking him. That was really stupid, but anyway... Um, this is when the craziness starts. So as you can see, I have a whole ton of villagers running across the map. And he even has some skirmishers here, which are just going to follow the villagers and attack them. But I got to say, man, this is one of the craziest things, definitely the craziest thing I have ever done in Age of Empires. And you'll see what it is pretty soon. But um, at this point, you know, Brigma still has the score lead. I figured, you know, I'm doing a little bit of harassment here, but it's not enough. He's just making too many pikemen. If I make knights, he'll just make pikemen. If I make archers, he'll just make skirmishers. So, yeah, I started make some, making some cavalry archers because they're pretty good at killing pikemen. Um, and all he was making was pikemen. So I figured, yeah, I'll just make some cavalry archers, which was a terrible, terrible decision. I should not have made cavalry archers. What I should have done in this situation is I should have put, out, put up another archery range and I don't know if I even had the resources. Yeah, I had tons of resources. So what I should have done is just put up another archery range, and I should have just absolutely um, massed uh, crossbowmen at the moment. That would have been great. I start making crossbowmen. I transition to them a little bit later, but at the moment, yeah, I just have... Um, I'm making these stupid cavalry archers, and I really should not have done that because you can't mass them, and they die to skirmishers just so easily when they're not massed. And they're really hard to mask because they're so expensive. But anyway, yeah, as you can see, I just have a ton of villagers running forward. And Bregman's probably wondering, like, what is this guy doing, this crazy fool? But yeah, I have a ton of villagers running forward. These pikemen are here to stop the villagers. And in come the cavalry archers. This is the one good thing that the cavalry archers were. They were able to defend the villagers while I put up a castle right in his base. So, as I said... I've watched hundreds of Age of Empires videos. I've never seen someone do this before. I have seen it on a certain game map called Arena. People do castle drops all the time, but I have never ever seen um, a castle drop in a just random land map. That's what it's called, a castle drop. Um, when you just basically drop a castle on your opponent's base. So that's what I decided to do because I was like, you know, there's no way I'm going to win this game just fighting one on one because he's going to beat me. He has a better economy than me. Um, and I was just too distracted, too far behind. Um, he had more resources. So there just wasn't a whole lot I could do to actually win the standard way. And also, I guess I have to mention this, he is also the better player. Um, so I just couldn't win a war of attrition, so I had to do something drastic. So I, yeah, I did decide to do the castle drop in his base. On second thought, it would have been much better if I had like um, tried to walk my villagers around here and maybe drop a castle back here. I don't know if I could have done that because there's this, these two town centers here. They might have been able to pick off my villagers. But yeah, I was starting to second guess myself and um, at the time I don't believe I knew that this second town center was back here. So um, to my knowledge I could have just dropped the castle back here and I might have still been able to like put the castle somewhere in here but it just would have been able to harass him much better. But anyway, yeah, I did have the castle drop so all these farms are now out of commission and I do upgrade um, my range on the castle, my range and attack damage, so it is able to pick off any villagers that are on this side of the town center. So pretty much this whole side of the town center is completely shut down. He can't use any of these farms, which is pretty nice. And then I also have my cavalry archers kind of picking off the villagers over here, <clears throat> so he can't gather from these farms as well, which is really nice because it basically means I've trapped him in a corner. He can't escape. Um, so if he wants to expand, he's going to have to go out here, which he decided not to do um, he just wanted to stay in his base I guess but um, yeah he could have still built some more farms around here but it is nice just because all these farms are shut down and all the ones over here are shut down as well and if you look at his resources Brigmas resources he has no food he has literally zero food at all and that's just because I killed off some of the villagers gathering from farms here and I killed off some of the ones gathering here so he lost quite of his 
uh, quite a few of his farming villagers and that means he uh, is going to really struggle to create more villagers because he's running low on food um, all his town centers are idle at the moment and he's housed I didn't even know this at the time but when you're housed obviously you can't create any more units but he's spending all his food creating more skirmishers instead of um, creating more villagers because he obviously lost some villagers and instead of creating more and trying to expand or trying to um, rebuild over on this side of the map, what he's doing instead is just pumping out tons of skirmishers to deal with my cavalry archers, which isn't necessarily a good idea because at this time his villagers are pretty well protected. Pretty much all of his villagers are really close to a town center. And the town center is in a packed space, so it would be really, really hard for these cavalry archers to harass the villagers anyway. So unless I got out some siege equipment, there's not really a whole lot that I could do, um, which I do decide to do later, obviously. But yeah, as you can see, these cavalry archers are just slaughtered by these skirmishers. It was such a waste making those. Um, but I do have a couple knights. As soon as I saw those skirmishers coming in, I immediately... Um, clicked up and started building a few knights but anyway um yeah i'm gonna just release these knights already and otherwise i would lose all these villagers here to these skirmishers so i really don't want that to happen but um these knights yeah skirmishers do not stand a chance these knights aren't even upgraded at all um which obviously i do later i just haven't had the resources but yeah the skirmishers don't stand a chance and at this point since um Bregma is the chinese and look at all these uh, gold that he has, and he has, I guess, a decent amount of wood, too. Um, he could definitely use a few more lumberjacks, but he has tons of gold and pretty much no food at all, and he keeps continuing to create skirmishers, which really wasn't a good idea at this time. What he really should have done is started transitioning into crossbowmen and just pumping out some crossmen, and he also needs to build some more houses, otherwise he's going to get housed again. But um, he really should have started making uh, crossbowmen, and if you mass a ton of crossbowmen, especially against unupgraded knights, the crossbowmen just kind of destroy them. <laughs> Even though knights are really good against crossbowmen, if you have enough of them, uh, they can take out knights pretty quickly as well. So, yeah, he's coming in with the battering rams again. Also not a good idea, because battering rams cost a ton of resources, and w instead of making that ram, he could have made like five crossbowmen, which would have really helped him out a lot more in this case, because this castle wasn't doing too much damage to him. Yes, it could have taken out this barracks and this blacksmith, but at the same time, you got to realize that there's a ton of open space here over on this side of the map, and he really could have just expanded over here, um, built some more farms, built up some more military buildings in this area of the map, and he wouldn't have had to worry too much about the castle. But he is coming in with those rams. He's just spending a ton of money on the rams, which are just going to get destroyed by the knights. Um, so anyway, yeah, he just spent a ton of resources on those that he really should have been making crossbowmen with. At the moment, he's just continuing to pump out skirmishers and pikemen. Um, but the thing is, the skirmishers just get absolutely destroyed by the knights. And at this point, I am starting to, well, go over to my point of view, I am starting to pump out crossbowmen. And the crossbowmen are very, very, very adept at um, killing the pikemen. So my knights just can destroy the skirmishers and my crossmen can just destroy the pikemen. You can also say that the skirmishers destroy the crossmen and the pikemen destroy the knights, but sometimes it's not as easy to do that. It really just depends on whoever has better control their, over their units or micro as it's known in this game. So whoever has the better micro usually wins this battle. At the moment I'm just kind of wasting my units because I don't have my gather points uh, inside my buildings so the the units are just going to pop out and suicide themselves and at this point I just didn't quite I didn't hadn't realized that yet but uh, eventually I do uh, put the gather points inside the buildings and I eventually um, yeah I do start not sending those knights to their deaths, I guess you could say. So, yeah, I'm just trying to get these battering rams down at the moment. And he's going to, luckily, thankfully, have to send his skirmishers back to try to defend his rams from the knights because he wants this castle down still. But, yeah, I just the knights take down rams very, very, very fast. But, unfortunately, this castle is going down quite fast, and I'm not going to be repairing it. But the castle has done its damage. Uh, pretty soon, I think I realized that... Um, Instead of attacking their rams, I'd be much better off just picking off these villagers here because um, this castle, as you can see, Bregma is super low on food. And I realize that he doesn't have a whole lot of farms out at the moment. So every farming villager that I pick off uh, helps out that much. So, yeah, using the battering rams to attack um, 
using the castle to the attack the battering ram sometimes isn't the best idea just because if the castle is going to go down anyway you're much better off actually picking off regular units so yeah I use my castle to uh, pick off a couple villagers here which is a much better choice in this situation and I'm also pumping out some more knights and some more crossmen so the pro crossmen are obviously going to be able to kill the pikemen very easily and the knights are going to be able to just destroy the skirmishers skirmishers don't even stand a chance against knights but um, back in my base, uh, I'm not doing so well. My economy has been struggling. Um, I'm on obviously only on two. Now I'm on three town centers because I did move up some villagers. I was too focused on Bregman's base here, and I did not um, look over in this direction when I built up this town center. But I did move a town center over here and built that. And I have some villagers just uh, trying to create a little mini economy over here. So I now have three town centers. But um, my economy is just really struggling, mostly because I'm so focused on this attack up here, I'm not able to be focused enough on my economy, um, and so it's not doing so well. But I'm, I'm, I guess I'm doing all right at the moment, because all he has is skirmishers at this point. Huge mistake, because he knows that I'm the Teutons, he knows that I'm going to be making knights. Why not make some pikemen? They cost... I believe they're even cheaper than skirmishers, so you really got to be making some pikemen there, man. But um, anyway, yeah, I have some crossbow here, so the knights are going to be pretty well defended. And he's just trying to quick wall in his town center, um, so I can't get in there and harass those villagers. Um, but yeah, that's what I was trying my best to do. This is the point where cavalry archers would be really, really helpful, because I could just move some cavalry archers down there and just pick off some villagers here. But he's also wisely keeping those skirmishers inside his archery ranges because he knows that knights are on the prowl and that his skirmishers don't really stand a chance against the knights. But anyway, yeah, here, um, I guess I destroyed his quick wall a little bit and I pick off a couple villagers. But I also put up an additional castle over here. I'm not really sure why. Um, my castle up here was destroyed, obviously, by those rams. Um, but yeah, I do have the castle up here now, so I guess this can defend the town center a little better. Um, it would have been much more useful out on the front here, which it, where it could help my guys attack uh, and assist me from being driven back again. But my economy over here is now struggling because he sent in some crossbowmen. I remember this part quite well. Um, and I just have nothing down on my base. So only a couple crossmen, and he's going to be sending in a couple more pretty soon. But just a couple crossbowmen do so much damage to my economy because um, villagers can't pick off crossbowmen as easily as they can archers. It's much more difficult for them. And these crossbowmen just, just can... Um, run rampant in my base. There's nothing that I can do about it because I have no military units and I don't want to send my knights down there because I know if I send my knights down there to kill the crossmen then he will just have some skirmishers come and just destroy my crossbows um, and that's going to be a ton of resources wasted on crossbows and I just I don't want my attack to fail here. I really want to put the pressure on and um, keep him uh, in a lot of danger and I know I'm going to be losing yeah, I just, my villagers are just getting slaughtered here. There's nothing that I can do at the moment. Um, but yeah, I eventually do uh, come down and kill off these crossbows once this base gets a little more secure. But I have a, a manga nail coming out, uh, and I wanted to be able to destroy this town center here and really put the pressure on him. There's not going to be a whole lot he can do if I just start destroying his buildings. And he can't really attack this Manganel because um, he could send skirmishers at it, but then I would just kill them with my knights. He could send pikemen at it, but the crossmen would kill them before they even got to the Manganel. So um, since he's not creating any cavalry of his own, he just can't do anything against this Manganel because um, any infantry or archers that he sends at it are going to be killed before they even get there. But anyway... The Manganel is coming in. Yeah, I have two Manganels out now, and they're just going to be taking down this town center very quickly. And again, um, I think he really could have done a little bit more with pressuring my uh, villagers here, but he sends in his crossbows, um, and this gold mine is almost out anyway, so it does isn't really that big of a deal. But yeah, he just has a couple crossbows here because he discovered my town center over here. And he's now um, harassing this town center as well. This one is a bit easier to deal with. I just sent a few knights over uh, to take out these crossbows here. But uh, back in my base, look at this. 
the whole northern TC is completely idle and the southern town center is going to be idle pretty soon as well because these archers are coming in and they're going to be um, doing some serious damage and this is the point where I realize you know if I don't take out these archers I'm going to lose the game because I'm just not going to have any resources coming in if you look at my resource count here I don't have enough resources to really do anything so I can't make uh, more knights I can't well I guess I can make a fair few amount of crossbows but I can't um, keep pumping out those nights uh, without any food production so this is the point where I realize you know um, here comes the night force knights this many knights um, even with a large amount of crossbows this many knights will just completely destroy them there's nothing they can do and also this town center is completely idle for some reason it really shouldn't have been I should have ungarrisoned this town center by now but again as I said I'm not really that great at this game I will be the first one to admit that but at this point I just have a huge mass of crossbows I've just been pumping out those crossbows the one resource that I do have is uh, wood and also a fair amount of gold so I do have resources to just continue to pump out those crossbows and I just want to get up to a huge mass of crossbows um, because once you have a, uh, a huge mass of them just not really a whole lot can stop them except a huge mass of skirmishers but anyway or a huge mass of knights but uh, um, he obviously is not creating knights in this game because he's decided to go more archer units. But here, um, yeah, for some reason, I don't know why, but he decided to go up by this gold again. Obviously, all my town centers are just, uh, all, right, all my villagers are just in the town center. So they're pretty well protected because the archers can't get to them. Otherwise, they'll be picked off very quickly by the town center. But um, I don't know. He could have at least done some harassment other than just attacking a gold mine but yeah as you can see those knights killed off those crossbowmen very very easily and I'm also up on my way to the imperial age so I'm going to be able to get out I'm gonna upgrade my knights and uh, get out even more forces to destroy his base but uh, he's got his fourth town center up now even though this town center down here is about to be destroyed so he just sends in his whole army here the whole shebang and this point I gotta realize you know if I don't take out this force I'm going to lose but um, yeah luckily I have the hill advantage here in Age of Empires if your units are staying on top of a hill they do more damage and I knew that so that's why I kind of position my units at the top of the hill and yeah with these knights once these knights came in it was just over because all he had was archer units and not even a whole lot of them at this point um, so these knights were just easily able to take out these archer units here because archers can't do a whole lot of damage to knights and this town center is also going to go down pretty soon I'm just going to keep those mangonels firing on the town center uh, and he wasted a ton of resources trying to repair that thing even though it was inevitable that the town center was going to go down but if yeah, if we look at his resource count in here, he has no wood at all. He's just completely empty in wood, which means he can't make archers, he can't make skirmishers, he can't make pikemen. He could make cavalry, but he obviously doesn't even have any stables up at the moment, so he can't make any of those. Um, he's just gone full into archer units, which wasn't the best idea because I'm making knights. Obviously, it's a good idea to make pikemen when your opponent is making knights, but I have those... Um, this crossbow mass that's just going to destroy those pikemen but anyway um, yeah I have another castle going up here in the front uh, since mine was uh, destroyed obviously by his battering rams so I yeah I just wanted to put up this castle again and really put on the pressure right against him because now with this castle up um, and with these crossmen out there's just no way he can d push me out of his base here I'm here to stay once this castle goes up and I am now in the Imperial Age as well and I believe I have the upgrade for Knights coming in uh, I was at this stable but yeah I upgrade my Knights to uh, Cavaliers pretty soon which is gonna make them even more powerful so at the moment if you look at his resources he has no wood and a ton of uh, gold and just nothing to spend it on because you can't build any units with just gold you need wood as well to make archers and um, yeah even though even if he had the wood to make tons of archers there's not much he can do because I just have too many units at the moment um, so now that this town center is destroyed my crossmen are just going to have a feast I'm just gonna roll in with these crossmen I guess not take out these villagers I decided against it for some weird reason but yeah I, I rolled in over here and yeah my uh, my mangonels here are just going to take out uh, this town center here move on to the next one and he just sends I guess everything he has here at me and he does have uh, quite a few skirmishers mixed in but the thing is my crossmen are fully upgraded 
I guess his crossmen are as well. But um, yeah, I just have too many crossmen. There's nothing he can do about it. And also, his crossbowmen were all focused on destroying the mangonels, which is a terrible thing to do. You want to take out my army before you destroy the mangonels, um, because mangonels are very, very resistant to arrow fire, so they're not going to be taking much damage from those archers. And m meanwhile, while his archers were shooting at the cross at the catapults, my archers were killing them. So. Again, that wasn't the best micro on his part, but that's just, you know, neither of us are pros or anything. We're just kind of average guys playing a game. But, yeah, I'm using my uh, crossmen to kind of strafe back and forth, which means uh, they're a bit harder to hit with arrow fire. And, yeah, I'm just using my uh, attacks to focus down one unit at a time, which really helps as well because you can just pick them off in one shot. But um, I believe the GG is going to be coming in pretty soon. There's just not really a whole lot that he can do at this point. So at this point, I kind of realized the writing's on the wall, and I'm finally going to beat this guy after playing one versus one against him many times and losing horribly. But anyway, I believe what really um, is going to win me this game was this just forward, this forward base and this pressure all game long, just uh, putting it in. And there's the GG, so he resigns. But anyway, what I yeah, what really won me this game is just the pressure. I um, just built those uh, this forward base here and just kept units streaming it against his base all game long. And he tried to do a little bit of the same, but his pressure just wasn't the same because he had to spend a lot of resources defending his base. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I know this one was much better than the last one I uploaded, and it was also kind of a long video as well, but uh, personally, this is like my favorite game in the entire world, and I love watching it, I love making videos of it, and I love playing it too, obviously. So thank you guys for watching. 